What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Hello. So I'm doing this video today about vaccinations, and I'm aware that this is an incredibly controversial topic. Vaccination is only controversial among the ignorant and the fearful. Among the world's medical profession, not at all. Um, and people are very passionate on both sides of the debate. There is no both sides. There is one side, that is, science, the medical community, and the debate already happened, decades and decades and decades of debate, by the medical profession. What other people have to say about the issue? Not at all relevant. If there's anybody out there who wants to debate the issue, write a paper and submit it to a science journal for peer review and publishing. That is where the debates occur. The debate about medical issues belongs in medical journals, not on YouTube, not on Facebook, not on Twitter, not on Instagram, not on any other place such as your mother's or grandmother's kitchen counter. It is held in science journals, peer-reviewed. Um, and for good reason, honestly. So I am i am not a doctor or a medical professional, and I'm not claiming to be, and I'm not trying to give medical advice. Therefore, you admit your opinions are utterly worthless. Why did you make the video then? I'm just sharing information that I was really glad to know when I was making this decision for my family. In 1986, Congress passed the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act in order to stabilize a vaccine market adversely affected by people suffering loss or harm from vaccination. Well, that was just freaky. Notice the caption that said, no liability. Huh. Vaccine producers, manufacturers, and suppliers and distributors are still 100% liable if they screw up. The problem with the people who have suffered vaccine injuries were waiting decades to have their cases processed through the legal system. People were dying before their cases were resolved. Therefore, the Vaccine Compensation Court it streamlined that position and radically reduced the burden of proof on the people who claim that they were injured by vaccines. This is a good thing. We need the Vaccine Compensation Court so that people who have been injured by vaccines can be compensated without having to die first. So this act shields pharmaceutical companies and doctors from liability if vaccines cause injury or death. Uh, no. If a vaccine causes injury or death due to liability issues from the pharmaceutical industry, they are still liable. They can still be dragged into court and sued their bloody pants off. What the Vaccine Injury Compensation Court does and did, and I hope will continue to do, is to streamline the process so that people who have been injured by a vaccine or just believe that they do, no longer need to meet a huge burden of proof before they are compensated. They may still sue the pharmaceutical companies if they wish. But the burden of proof, massively greater in a tort litigation than the vaccine court. Vaccine court. Good. Um, I think it's really important to know that in the 32 years that this law has been active, over $4 billion dollars has been paid out to families who've suffered a loss or um, an injury um, from vaccinations. The four billion that has been paid out wasn't paid from the pharmaceutical companies, but it is paid out by a tax that is on each vaccine that goes into a fund that people get paid from that. 
Well, that's good to know. That shows that the Vaccine Injury Compensation Court is working. Quote, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that among children born in the last 20 years, vaccinations will prevent more than 21 million hospitalizations and 732,000 deaths. Link down below, note one. Also noted that 259 billion in direct cost and 1.38 trillion dollars in total societal cost have been saved due to vaccines just in the last 20 years. Woohoo! Win win for everybody. This is good news. In 1962, there were 5 doses recommended. In 1983, there were 24 doses recommended, and this is when a lot of people were suing the pharmaceutical companies. And after they got shielded from any liability... As noted, the pharmaceutical industry is not shielded from liability. The vaccine schedule has exploded, and it is now to where it is here in 2018. Woohoo! This is a good thing! This is a wonderful thing! We want more vaccines! Ah. The more vaccines, the healthier people are, the longer they live. Because they live! If you don't have vaccines, you have dead people! Ah. I have a friend who has leishmaniasis that he contracted in the jungles of Honduras. There's no vaccine, there's no adequate treatment. The treatments that exist are beyond horrifying. They might save his life, but he'd rather be dead than go through those treatments. They are horrible. Leishmaniasis eats faces. It eats faces off of people who have leishmaniasis. We desperately need a vaccine for that. We need hundreds of more vaccines. Vaccines, good. Death and screaming agony, bad. Why do I have to point this out to somebody? Ah! Ah! I'm sorry. Too much coffee? Also, it's important to know the ingredients in vaccines, some of which are very concerning. That's right. Among the ignorant and the stupid and the fearful, ingredients of vaccines are a concern. Among the medical community? No. Anybody who has a concern about ingredients of vaccines, write a paper, submit it to a relevant peer-reviewed science journal, and address that concern. How does making a YouTube video help? The ones that I'm most concerned about is aluminum, which is a known neurotoxin. That just cracks me up. That's right. People who are concerned about aluminum in their body need to stop eating and drinking because that's where 99% of the aluminum in human bodies, and by the way, other mammals, comes from. Oh no! We need a food injury court formaldehyde which is a known carcinogen and mercury and a lot of people have told me that mercury is no longer in vaccines but it is in fact in many flu vaccines there's a minor difference between methyl mercury and ethyl mercury one can kill you the other you shit out your backside or piss out or both Guess which one is in vaccines? So I have here a vaccine insert and it says MMR2 has not been evaluated for carcinogenic or mutagenic potential or potential to impair fertility. Nor has the MRR vaccine been tested for causing many tens of thousands of other medical conditions. There's a reason for that. 
There is no reason to look when there is no evidence that it is even happening or even possible. Why look for something that there is absolutely no evidence that it might even be happening? Why look for something when there is evidence that shows it is not happening? There is no link between cancer and any vaccine. By the way, there are now vaccines against some cancers. Woohoo! Um, so that's really good to know, especially because a lot of vaccines have carcinogenic ingredients. No! And then they have also not been tested if it causes cancer or not. Neither has green peas, steamed prunes, toasted sourdough bread with raspberry jam. There's a reason why vaccines are not tested to see if they cause cancer. There's no evidence that even remotely suggests they do. As soon as there's some evidence out there, they will be tested to see if they cause cancer. By the way, vaccine rate sharply increased, cancer rate very slightly increased, and we know why. Human beings are getting older. So, don't eat peas or steamed prunes or sourdough bread with raspberry jam, just to be sure. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.